Hello, this is about setting up a simple JavaFX project using Maven as well. So this is an introduction for uh, people that are just starting out with uh, JavaFX and just wanting to know how to set up IntelliJ so that we can use JavaFX and Maven and don't run into a lot of problems for a long time. So let me try to show you an easy way to set up a project where we can keep running without all of the all of the hard stuff yet. We can always add that later, so I'm just going to show you an easy way. So there are some build on in stuff in IntelliJ to make it easy. First off, I want to create a new project. If you've opened this before, you might be able to see other projects. You just need to click new. When I cl click new project, there is it's defaulting to this one called Java. This is generalized one for Java, but I want to show Java effects. And basically we could use this one, but then we would need to manually start programming. And I think it would be nice to have like a starting point for our application. This also adds some sample code, but it's not going to be a Java FX application, just a simple application that prints out to the console or something like that. So it's it's just going to be in text output, not very much fun in that. So the easiest way I found is just to click the JavaFX one, because then you'll get the JavaFX um, kind of starting point. You need to set this up. Some of it is already set up because I tried this before on this computer. So I'm just going to call it demo three. You have to set up your location. This is your home folder. And then you can click here to set up any other folder. It's important that you remember where you save this because you're probably going to need, know that use that later. Uh, Git repository is for making sure that it tracks the changes of your code. I, I, this is not the topic of this video. Then we can um, also go into, uh, we can choose language. I choose Java because this is what it's about here. Uh, the build system, I want to show with this with Maven. Um, the group is going to be anything unique because I use DKESV because that's where I work. So it's like the opposite of the domain name. So Microsoft would use something like Microsoft.com just in the opposite uh, way. If you have your own homepage, you can use that. It doesn't matter too much as long as it's unique. And then the artifact, you can just leave that as the same as with the name. There's a small uh, explanation saying just leave it as is. So, And then uh, you have to choose the JDK. And if this is the first time that you do this, this will just be red. It will say there is nothing here. So you can then click download JDK. And then you need to choose a vendor because Java is um, just a specification that Oracle makes. So anyone can implement Java and a lot of companies and organizations do that and they have different implementations of it, different ways of, of doing it. And um, yeah, you can basically choose anyone, but if you want to make your life easier in the beginning, and this is the topic for this video, I definitely recommend using Bellsoft like Birka JDK. It says full here. This is important because this includes Java effects, all the others, does not include JavaFX. So if you want JavaFX as part of your project, this is the easiest way to do it. You can do the other ones, but it, it can lead to some problems later on. So I really, if you're just beginning, this is so much easier to get started and you can then later understand all of the other stuff. So then you click download and it will start uh, downloading. You see it says two here because I already downloaded it once. Then you click next then you can skip all of this. This is just different libraries for making things look nice or a new functionality. We don't want that right now. And then it opens up the program. Then if this is the first time, it will take a lot of time. You'll have a lot of pop-ups and stuff. Um, what I recommend is just you wait until there is no more pop-ups. Just wait. You really need to have some patience. It's going to take a long time. It's it, pops up with stuff you can click on. Just don't do anything yet. Just wait until it stops spinning down here. I'll just maximize the window. And it should uh, stop spinning after some time. Most of the pop-up should, should go away. 
And when it's completely stopped with all of this spinning stuff here, then you should actually be ready to go. So if I click play, it can actually run the program. And we have a nice and uh, running program. Let me show you. Sometimes in Windows, if you open the program, you have maximized. It pops, kind of pops under. I'm going to show you. Ah, in this case, it works. Sometimes you have to click down here to make it show up. It will flash down here. But uh, yeah, this is the demo application that's built in. So welcome to JavaFX application. You can try uh, working with that. The other thing I would recommend that you do straight away is that you go into source and Java, and then there's this file called module info, uh, which basically is a file that explains uh, how this program is going to relate to other programs. So it means that every time that you need to use something from this program in another program, you need to do these exports. And also you need also to use these opens for any program that you are using. So if you delete this file, it will just uh, import anything and export anything. And this will give you some problem if, if you're doing like big projects. But right now, I think for starting out, I think you're going to have a lot easier time to remove this file. If you remove this file, okay, let me just delete it. You can always create a new project for, uh, and, and copy it from there if you want it back. If I delete it and run the program, it should still work. If it doesn't work, it's probably because you didn't choose Liberica because then it won't work. So with Liberica, it will still work. But without Liberica, if you use OpenJDK or some of that stuff, it won't just work out of the box because it's missing this, this file here. This is why I like the Liberica for starting out. And later you can start understanding um, how uh, these modules work and what you should do. So that's it for, for this video. There's, oh, I forgot one thing. Um, something that's uh, nice is that there is different parts of the program here. For example, this is some code that actually writes the text. When I click hello, you can see when on hello button click, do this stuff here. So uh, the problem is now I can't run the program. So the problem is there's only one of these files that can be run and this is the one that holds this main method here. You see also it's green here. So you kind of need to um, click this one or click while you're inside of this file. If you go into the other files, you cannot click here. So I would recommend uh, what you do is if you click here and then say run, it will actually create a run configuration. So it will remember this. So let me show you. If I click here, it won't do it. It will just keep this current file thing. There's nothing here right now. So if I click here and run, it will create a run configuration that it's actually hello application I want to run when I click up here. And then it runs the program like before, but it now remembers that this is my application. So if I go down to the controller, I can now choose just the current file, which I cannot run, or I can actually choose this one. So even though I'm, I'm doing stuff in here, welcome to uh, my application instead of JavaFX. I can then just click the button and it runs from ever, everywhere, which is pretty nice. That's it. So the only other thing is I'm going to do another video like where we can understand a bit more about this build system. Why do we need this Maven stuff? And uh, what is Maven? And what should we be careful doing? And I'll also explain this resource folder and this thing called a palm file. See you.